Hello and assalamu alaikum this is continuation of lecture number 16 and in this part of lecture I will discuss about amorphous silicon. So basically amorphous uh, silicon or ASI is a non crystalline form of silicon that is used for manufacturing of solar cells and the thin film transistors in LCDs. So uh, the basic uh, thickness is about 2 micro uh, meter 2 micrometer thick amorphous silicon vapor uh, is deposited on glass or uh, stainless steel so basically uh, the glass or stainless uh, steel uh, roll is acting as a substrate and uh, the silicon structure is uh, deposited on this substrate layer and it uses about uh, only 1% of the material as compared to the crystal, uh, crystalline uh, silicon uh, structures and its efficiency is about half of the crystalline silicon technology at present but uh, the cost also uh, is significantly less so this is the uh, basic uh, comparison uh, table of crystalline and uh, amorphous uh, silicon technology uh, this is the, uh, so the present st status of crystalline silicon uh, uh, workhouse or uh, terrestrial and space applications uh, and uh, for amorphous uh, silicon the present uh, status is uh, newly rapidly uh, developing technology tens of megawatt of yearly production of facilities uh, were commissioned in 1996 to produce uh, the uh, low cost of uh, uh, cells uh, that is uh, the amorphous silicon so the next is the thickness the thickness of uh, the crystalline uh, silicon structure is about 200 to 400 micrometers uh, or 0.004 to 0.008 inches and for amorphous silicon the thickness is about 2 micrometer that is less than 1% of the, that in crystalline uh, silicon uh, uh, now the next comparison is of about uh, raw materials and crystalline the uh, amount of uh, raw material usage is high as compared to the amorphous silicon uh, it's about 3% uh, uh, of what that is used in uh, crystalline silicon now next comes the uh, conversion uh, conversion efficiency uh, for crystalline silicon it's about 16 to 20% and uh, it is high as compared to the amorphous silicon which has an uh, conversion efficiencies of about 8 to uh, 10 percent the next comparison is about the module cost module costs uh, for crystalline silicon is uh, from uh, in 2004 was three to five dollars per watt uh, expected to fall slowly due to uh, the uh, maturation of uh, this technology and the for the amorphous uh, silicon it is uh, quite uh, low it was three to five dollar per watt expected to and it is expected for rapidly two dollar per watt due to uh, substantial doe uh, funding to fully develop this uh, new technology uh, amorphous uh, silicon uh, is the non uh, uh, silicon uh, non crystalline form of silicon that is used for manufacturing of solar cell and thin film transistor and used as a semiconductor material for uh, a silicon solar cell or thin film uh, silicon solar cells uh, it is deposited in thin films or a variety of uh, flexible substrates such as uh, glass or stainless steel or metal and it can be a pl uh, plastic as well <coughs> morphous uh, silicon uh, cells generally uh, feature uh, low efficiency as I showed you in the, ta uh, uh, in the table of comparison of crystalline and uh, amorphous uh, silicon uh, photovoltaic cells but one of the most uh, env uh, environmental uh, friendly photovoltaic uh, technology is, con is considered to be amorphous uh, silicon uh, uh, cell technology since they do not use uh, any kind of toxic heavy materials uh, for example lead and uh, cadmium uh, in their manufacturing process amorphous sil uh, silicon uh, differs from other uh, allotropic uh, variations uh, for example monocrystalline silicon and uh, single uh, which have a single uh, crystal 
and polysilicon structure that consists of small grains also which are called uh, crystallites silicon is a fourfold uh, coordinated atom uh, that is uh, normally uh, tetrahedral uh, uh, bound to four uh, of its uh, neighboring silicon atoms in crystalline uh, silicon uh, known as CSI uh, it uh, this uh, tetrahedral uh, structures continues over a large range thus forming a well uh, ordered crystalline uh, crystal lattice in amor amorphous uh, silicon this long range order uh, is not present rather the atoms are, are form a continuous random network More, uh, moreover not all the atoms within the amorphous uh, silicon are fourfold uh, coordinated due to the uh, disordered nature of the material some of the atoms have uh, dangling bonds associated with them physically these uh, dangling bonds uh, uh, represent defects in the continuous random network and may cause uh, anomalous uh, electrical behavior. Amorphous uh, uh, alloys of silicon and carbon, uh, known as amorphous silicon carbide, are uh, uh, interesting variant. Introduction of carbon atoms adds an extra degree of uh, freedom for control of the properties of the material. The film uh, could also be made transparent to visible light, which can increase uh, the concentration of carbon in the alloy. Uh, uh, basically, it uh, uh, increases the light efficiency. Also, uh, increasing the concentration of carbon in the alloy widens the electric gap between the conduction uh, uh, and the valence bands also known as the optical bands and the band gap this can potentially increase the light efficiency of the solar cells made with uh, amorphous uh, silicon carbide layers on the other hand the electronic properties such as uh, uh, semiconductors uh, uh, mainly electron mobility are adversely affected by the increasing uh, content of carbon in the alloy uh, due to increased uh, disorder in the atomic uh, and, uh, network Several studies have indicated that in scientific uh, literature it has been uh, basically reported uh, mainly in, uh, that may in mainly investigating the effects of uh, deposition parameters on electronic quality but uh, typical applications of amorphous uh, silic uh, silicon carbide in uh, commercial uh, devices are still lacking. So hopefully uh, with the passage of time, uh, my researchers will find a way to use more amorphous silicon structures in photovoltaic cell uh, to increase, uh, to uh, find the ways to basically increase its overall efficiency.